All right, so we are going to read book 16. It is called Father and Son, and this part of the Odyssey is usually referred to as the homecoming because Odysseus has finally made it home. Now, because of what we just reviewed, this difficult situation at home, he can't just walk in and be like, hey, it's me, Odysseus, because there are a hundred men in his house, and they would probably attack him. All right, so this is on page 167 of the virtual text. Just trying to make it fit the screen a little better. All right, so this italic part is a summary of some things that we've missed. In books 13 through 15, King Alcinus and his friends send Odysseus on his way home. Odysseus sleeps while the rowers bring him to Ithaca. When he awakens, he fails to recognize his homeland until Athena appears and tells him that he is indeed home. So remember, Athena is all over this story. Um, she has always favored Odysseus. She's the one who gave him the idea for the Trojan horse. She's the one who convinced Zeus to have Calypso set him free. So Athena is always there to protect him. All right. She disguises him as an old man so he can surprise the suitors. So in order to keep him safe, she gives him a disguise. And then she urges him to visit his faithful swineherd, Eumaeus. I'm not going to tell you what a swineherd is because it's someone's job to look it up. You can just use the right click trick and it will tell you. So he is going to a swineherd's hut, Eumaeus. So we can guess that that is someone of a lower class status. The swineherd welcomes the disguised Odysseus and tells him about what has been happening in Odysseus's home. Now, the swineherd does not know it's Odysseus. He's just disguised as a beggar. And we've already talked about how in Greek society, the custom was that you're helpful to strangers or anyone who needs help. That's the custom. So Eumaeus being a good man is just helping this beggar. Athena goes to Telemachus and tells him to return home. So Athena finds Telemachus on his journeys to learn about his father, sends him back home, but she also warns him of what the suitors are doing, and so she sends him to the swineherd's house. So Athena has arranged this whole situation where she's sending both Odysseus disguised as a beggar and Telemachus to the swineherd's house. But there were two men in the mountain hut. So it's a hut. It's not a palace like what Odysseus lives in. Odysseus and the swineherd. At first light, blowing their fire up, they cooked their breakfast. So they didn't like explode the fire. It's like you've probably seen on nature shows or something. Like you have to add air and oxygen to a fire to make it bigger. They cooked their breakfast and sent their lads out, driving herds to root in the tall timber. So they get up, they send like the younger men who are working with the swine herd to take the herds, this word herd, I'm trying not to spoil it because it's someone's job to look this up. And so they send the herds out into the trees. Now Telemachus arrives. When Telemachus came, the wolfish troop of watchdogs only fawned on him as he advanced. So there are these like fierce watchdogs outside the hut, but they're not fierce towards Telemachus. Odysseus heard them go and heard the light crunch of a man's footfall, at which he turned quickly to say, Eumaeus, here's one of your crew come back, or maybe another friend. The dogs are out there snuffling, belly down. Not one has even growled. I can hear footsteps. So the swineherd's dogs react very positively to Telemachus. That must mean that they know him, right? Because if a dog is going to be like calm about you coming, especially if it's like kind of an aggressive watchdog, then it must know you. But before he finished, his tall son stood at the door. So now Odysseus is seeing his son after 20 years. But remember, his son wouldn't recognize him to begin with because his son probably has no memory of what he looks like. Um, but also he's disguised as a beggar. The swine herd rose in surprise, letting a bowl and jug tumble from his fingers. So the swine herd, the man whose hut this is, is surprised to see Telemachus, but he's happy. Going forward, he kissed the young man's head, his shining eyes in both hands, while his own tears brimmed and fell. So the swine herd is overjoyed to see Telemachus. Think of a man whose dear and only son, born to him in exile, reared with labor, has lived 10 years abroad and now returns. How would that man embrace his son? Just so, the herdsman clapped his arms around Telemachus and covered him with kisses. 
for he knew the lad had got away with death. So had got away from death. So this scene confuses people every time we read it because they're describing the swine herd's reactions to, to Telemachus with a situation that's very similar to Odysseus's own situation with Telemachus. But this is the swine herd's reaction to him. Um, Telemachus and the swine herd don't know who Odysseus is. And we're about to find out why the swine herd is so happy to see Telemachus. The swine herd says, Light of my days, Telemachus, you made it back. When you took ship for Pylos, I never thought to see you here again. Come in, dear child, and let me feast my eyes. Here you are, home from distant places. How rarely you visit us anyways, your own men, your own woods and pastures. Always in the town, a man would think you loved those suitors' company, those dogs. So the swineherd is saying he didn't think he'd ever see Telemachus again, either because he would meet misfortune on his journeys looking for his father or because he knows the rumors in the town that the suitors want to kill Telemachus. So like maybe they would find him and have him killed, but when he came back, they would kill him. And then he kind of makes like a little dig at Telemachus, like, oh, you never come see us anymore anyway. It's like you like those suitors. Telemachus, with his clear candor, said, I am with you, uncle. See now, I have come because I wanted to see you first, to hear from you if mother stayed at home. Or is she married off to someone and Odysseus's bed left empty for some gloomy spiders weaving? So he's asking the swineherd, did my mom get married to one of these men? Like, could she not resist them anymore? Is she married off or is she still at home waiting? Gently, the forester replied to this. That's another phrase using to describe the swineherd. At home, indeed, your mother is, poor lady, still in the women's hall. Her nights and days are wearied out with grieving. So in this time, Telemachus has gone away. Odysseus has not been forgotten by Penelope. Penelope has not remarried. Um, she is still grieving for the loss of her husband, you know, grieving because her son's gone, waiting, hopefully one day for one of them to return. All right, and we're going to take a little break before we read the rest. <laughs> 